All right, it's 11.30 a.m., so I'm going to call to order the regular meeting of the Technology Committee for Tuesday, November 7, 2023. Can I get a roll call, please? Berlin. Here. Cahill. Here. Carrier. Here. Eckhoff. Here. Pelosi. Here. Justin. Here. Henry. Here. Kazmierek. Here. Mendrick. Rutledge. Here. White. Here. You. I'm here. Did you get that in? Are there extra copies of the agenda on here? A chance? Oh, thank you so much. No worries. All right. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's a lot. Everybody else doing one? What I am holding. I am holding. All right, so for Chairwoman's remarks, I just wanted to just update you guys on the day force implementation for our new ERP payroll system, which is on pace. Um, I've been attending along with obviously Anthony, our CIO, um, and Liz Chaplin and um, other members of staff um, have been attending the steering committee meetings. So if you actually do want specific updates with regard to the day force implementation, please let me know. Um, but just in general, they're still in the discovery phase. They're in this phase called initiate. Um, and they're going through that through November 15. They are on schedule and so far so good. And um, you can speak for yourself, Anthony, but I, I believe that technology is um, pretty happy with what's going on. Yeah, we're, we're, we're very happy with uh, Ceridian, the, um, the uh, application owner. So that company seems to be very solid. The um, implementation company on Actuate, which is separate from that company, also they seem to have a lot of experience and expertise. So so far, so so good from that perspective. So yeah. still have a lot of work to do. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, that concludes my remarks. I've been advised that there's no public comment, so I'm just going to move on to the approval of minutes. Can I get a motion to approve so the three, second. Five, seventy-three uh, minutes for the technology committee meeting from November? Uh, actually, it should have been not November 7th, it should have been October 24, correct? I did correct it. Huh? 17. Oh, so I apologize. I October 17th. Yeah. 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 yeah, I apologize. It is the 24th. So it's the 24th? Yeah. yeah. October 24th. Okay. Um, so, yes, I believe we have a um, motion. Yes. And yeah. a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that carries. So let's move on to TEP 007023. Can I get a motion for recommendation for the approval of a contract purchase order to CDWG Inc. for the purchase of laptops, desktop monitors, and docking stations for IT for the period of November 15, 2023 through November 30, 2024 for a contract total amount of $148,610.70. So moved. Second. second. Thank you, Member Rutledge. And the second was from Member Gustin. Um, any questions with regard to this item? Question. Yes, number um, How often do we change these out? Do you have an inventory cycle system and these just happen to be up during the cycle? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So we um, we try to replace anywhere from 10 to 20% of our entire fleet every year. It's call, very costly to do you know all of them at the same time. We have close to 2,000 devices. Um, so this is about 160 devices total. Th this particular purchase is only 95. Early in the year, we did 75 devices. Uh, we completed a hardware inventory, discovered older devices, devices that are working correctly, ones that have security risks because of their age, can't upgrade the OS. So this is an, an additional 95 that we're doing, 10 desktops and uh, 85 laptops. Um, but and it's a total of 8% of our fleet so for this year. So, but the, the goal is anywhere from 10 to 20% each year. So this is actually a lower percentage this year. On behalf of member Rutledge, what do you do to do with the old equipment? Is it recycled? They are recycled, yeah. yeah. So those devices are wiped, the hard drives are wiped clean completely. I think they're destroyed too, right? And just, and destroyed so that they can't, and no one can access our sensitive data. So we get rid of them and then they go through a recycling process. And there's no way to recycle them and, and blank them out and donate them to schools or anything? No. Okay, thank you. Well, and, and you it, replace the hard drive in the machine, but that's... It, it, it never works. The reason why yeah. it never works. So I used for, for Chicago Public Schools for close to 20 years. So I was in charge of that and that process. It never works because schools end up with super old equipment that people don't want that they can't really use, yeah. right? Yeah. The technology is 
five, six, sometimes 10 years behind. And the, the applications, the current applications don't work on that old technology. So what happens is the schools then have piles of machines that they can't use that are you know, usually stored in some storage facility, but it, it doesn't really help them at all. Great. Thank yeah. you. Good yeah. thinking though, Patty. Thank you. <laughs> and just so you know that this was the, the lowest quote from CDWG by far, the lowest quote. Yeah, the so the, so, so we, we, we did three vendors. The highest was almost 200,000, uh, second highest, I think 175, and this one was 148. Yep. So yep. we we bid it out and we try to get the lowest you can ever Is supply yeah. chain an issue? I mean, yes, we're approving this, it, but can we actually acquire them? We can. So for these, they are available now. If we you know approve it now, we okay. order them, we should be fine. Um, supply chain issues, it ebbs and flows. So right okay. now we're 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 fine. But who knows, you know, the next time we get something else. Okay. Thanks, Sam. But the inventory is there now. Okay, great. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That passes. Thank you. Uh, moving on to TEP 007-123, can I get a motion for a recommendation for the approval of a contract purchase order to BDO USA Solutions Provider LLC for the annual software maintenance of Fire Eye Security Software. This contract covers the period of December 10, 2023 through December 9, 2024 for IT for a contract total amount of $165,113. So moved. Second. All right. Um, I have a motion and a second. Any discussion with regard to this item for cybersecurity? All right, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, that passes. Um, now, item TEP 007223. Can I please get a motion for recommendation for the approval of a contract purchase order to Imaging Systems Inc., uh, doing business as Integrated Document Technologies, IDT, for the annual Highland and CAPSIS Software Assurance Maintenance of Imaging Systems, for Supervisor of Assessments, Treasurer, Family Center, Coroner, and County Clerk, paid for by IT for the period of January 1, 2024 through January 31, 2025, for contract total amount of $63,300.76. So moved. Second. Okay, right. motion by Catherine and Hill, second by Member Galassi. Um, any discussion with regard to this item? Great. Any, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, that passes. Right. So then there is TEP 007323. Can I get a motion for a recommendation for the approval of contract purchase order to IBM Corporation for the purchase of program product software licenses for IBM ZOS and software support and maintenance for the BC12Z system server for IT for the period of December 1, 2023 through November 30, 2024 for a total contract amount of $111,171.72 That was a lot of Z's. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, second motion from um, member carrier and second by member Rutledge. Um, any questions with regard to this one? No, I'm sure. Just yes. uh, some background here. So this is the operating system, the maintenance and support for the operating system of our existing mainframe. Our mainframe will go away soon. Um, we hope to have it sunsetted and shut down by the end of next year. Um, worst case in 2025, the only thing that's holding that up are applications that are running on it that are owned by other agencies. So, Sheriff's Office, the I think uh, the circuit, uh, not the circuit, the clerk uh, of the circuit court uh, has applications, but we're working with them to move those applications off. Um, once that happens, this cost thing goes away. Thank you, Anthony. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes. Thank you. Now, um, item 233570, can I get a motion for recommendation for the approval of a contract purchase order to Telecom Innovations Group for professional services and licensing for the MyCamp speech activation software for IT for the period of November 8, 2023 through November 7, 2024 for a contract total amount of $22,856. So moved. Second. All right. Motion by member Rutledge, second by member Galassi. Any discussion with regard to this item? So yes, I'm assuming, um, obviously we all love voice activated software, except when you're dealing with Alexa who can't kind of figure <laughs> out your voice. I changed mine to the Aussie guy because I'm just so sick of her. Um, but the question is on this one, um, uh, for our, our hearing impaired or speaking, what, is this going to be something that on our disability level that will be able to help residents and help employees be able to it, use things better? It, it will. It'll be, be able to do two things. Number one, for existing employees, specifically for the public defender's office, 
it'll allow for them to not have to address a bunch of calls, right? Have someone there to answer the calls um, necessarily. And it replaces an old system that requires for people to wait and then choose a number to, to then be sent to that extension. Um, for the users, it helps with them, uh, for individuals who are disabled and they're not able to press, they can voice now the number of the option or the person's name, and then it automatically sends them to that extension. Perfect. So it's, it definitely helps out in, in that particular sense. Um, we have a increase in volume in a lot of these calls. It'll definitely help with the, them, have, them managing that volume and people are calling to get to that extension much faster now instead of having to listen to the entire call. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for that question with regard to equity. Um, any other questions or discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Oh, thank you, that passed. And then item 233571, I get a motion for recommendation for the approval of a contract purchase order to in for bank for year end patch installation and application support for the human resources and payroll modules of the ERP system for the human resources department for the period of December 1, 2023 to November 30, 2024 for a total contract amount of $24,120. So moved. Second. And thank you for the motion and the second. Um, any discussion? All right, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. That passes. So we're gonna move on to other action items on TER 004-523. Um, I like a motion on the adoption of the technology resources acceptable use policy. Second, or I motion. Motion. Hang on. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so let's. We probably need to discuss this. Um, does anybody have any specific questions to start us off? So, if you don't mind, let me give some background, and then you may have some <laughs> background. So, uh, technology ac acceptable use policies are used in all organizations. It's essentially a guideline to give all users a, a understanding of what they can do and what they can't do with the technology, how to use it and how not to use it, what's appropriate, what's inappropriate. Um, the last time we introduced this was 11 years ago, so we have not updated it. And as you all know, technology has changed considerably in the past 11 years. So the team went through and made uh, uh, tons of natural updates. Uh, there are a couple specific things that I think you should be aware about that we updated. Number one, I think it's on page 12. There's uh, additional security information in there about how to you know, make sure that you stay secure. And then the other one, which I think is a big one, and, and we, we've done it, but I think when people hear it, sometimes they react to it. We are changing our policy in terms of um, how we handle, uh, how we issue devices. So we're doing what's called one device, uh, meaning that each individual gets one device. In the past, individuals would get sometimes multiple devices. They would get a desktop and they would get a laptop. They could take, take home or desktop and a, a, a tablet. We don't think that's the best use of county dollars. If we think it's more effective for us to purchase a laptop that's lightweight that they can use in the office and if they need to use it at home, they can take it home. So we're really pushing one device. We've actually done it quite a bit because of COVID. It allowed, allowed us to uh, really accelerate that process. Um, there's still a few exceptions out there and we do make exceptions to, to that particular process mm -hmm. when necessary. There are individuals for physical reasons, health reasons, they can't carry a device back and forth, we will allow an exception. But, but that's a big change for a lot of people and we're really pushing that. It, can, it saves us quite a bit of money. Instead of buying two devices, buy one, yeah. right? Plus a docking uh, station. Thank you, Chair. Uh, and actually I was gonna bring this up under old business, um, kind of a little bit going back to the purchase with CDWG. Um, do you tend to lean to the Apple side of things or the Microsoft side of things? And do most of our software packages support either platform? And because I've been dealing with that question for 30 some years, well, yeah. maybe not 20 years. Um, always cheaper to buy Microsoft, but probably have to replace them a little more often. So how do you feel about that? Yeah, that's, a, that's an excellent question. So we are primarily a Microsoft shop, okay. right? We um, uh, we have very few Apple devices because in most cases, there, there are no needs, 
there's no need for it, right? So Apple devices are great for very specific uses and very specific uses only. So individuals who do CAD, right? They need CAD drawings, right. they need a lot of space, it's good for them. People like uh, Evan disappeared somewhere, but does graphics, right? right. So if they need that. Yeah, you can um, still do that on can, Microsoft. But you can still do all of that on Microsoft. We prefer not to support Apple devices because then we have to have um, PC techs who are then trained specifically only for those Apple devices. Right now, our PC techs are fully trained on the Windows, Microsoft, and by our environment. Um, and then we have to create different rules because it's different uh, software we have to have installed on it. It's just a, a different support model. For county government, it's really not needed. Okay, thanks. Yeah. I've never yeah. asked that question before, yeah. and mm -hmm. that was my wheelhouse. I, I would say I have to defer to, to the team. We probably very little Apple, right? Just, yeah. just iPads. Just iPads. Uh, okay. It which I yeah. turned in after a couple of months. I'm like, I don't know how to run this <laughs> thing. Yeah. So, thank you. Yeah. So, so very little. We're Microsoft. Yeah. And it's, much, it's a fraction of the price, right? Exactly. So maybe a third of the price or half. <laughs> yeah, and I just want to say thank you again to IT staff because I took a look at the red line versions and this, there was a lot of additions, a lot of deletions. It's like a complete overhaul of it. So thank you. Um, any other questions with regard to, yes. I do have, um, have a question. How does this uh, information get pushed out? Are we going to do another mandatory training thing? <laughs> or is it, do, does it also go to all new employees? I think it's important for as soon as they get here to, you know. Yeah, that's a good question. I know we posted <laughs> on the website. So, yeah, so the HR department will send out a policy acknowledgement for all existing employees and all new employees have to read them. It's part of the personnel policy manual. Okay. So all new employees have a link to that and it's on our website. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Okay, so I'm at the table, but I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> on, the, on that last point, that, that's a very important point because what we see in the auditor's office pretty often is um, employees will say, I didn't know about that policy. So, and I'll, I'll just throw a quote. The, the, the auditor in Wilkow County, W. Blackburn, um, shared a very, a very good quote, which is that culture eats policy for lunch. So that unless we have training to say it's in the policy manual, and the employee says, well, I didn't know that. So I think the idea that there should be education on this with the changes, and, and this is only one example of where policy needs to be communicated better. So I don't want to get too deep in that other than take out my position that we do have to educate everybody and repetition is key to say we told you once six years ago and you didn't read the policy manual that doesn't get us where we need to be which is everybody follow the policy that's just my comment, comment on that yeah. Thank and, you, and, yeah, and it makes a lot of sense so we, we can definitely work <laughs> talk about it you know, and it's not it's everybody yeah. it's not just yeah. <laughs> it's, it's yeah. everybody we, we love training so yeah. you guys know, know me before. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And maybe there should there should be some email that's sent out to let everybody know about this new adopted policy. Yeah, we can absolutely do that. So okay. great. Yes, Member Dustin. I know in other places they actually do a person video, somebody who speaks to what the changes are, and then people open up the video and go, oh. Okay, that's a change. And some people learn differently, right? Some people learn by reading, some people learn by vision. So maybe that you have some good looking person or not. <laughs> in your I nominate Anthony. Anthony oh, yeah. do it and just become the new tutorial for uh, you know for all these upgrades, policy do, changes. Do we know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> those, those videos actually do work, especially when they're in small bites. Mm -hmm. to, people tend to consume them faster and better when, yeah. when you do that. So I agree. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the exact point. We are, my office is considering an accounts payable video about accounts payable processes yeah. for the, exactly that same reason. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Any other well, we can shoot it for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, we have <laughs> talent here. Yeah. Yeah. We, we talked about this before. We yet, so. All right, everyone. Any other discussion? Listen, uh, I, I read through it. I think it's, I think it's well written. Yes, I thought it was well written. Thank you. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. And that passes too. Thank you very much. So moving on to old business. Anybody have old business? I just want to highlight something. So as you know, we've uh, announced the chair, as well as myself, I communicate to you guys that we've won a few awards. Uh, one for um, web services, uh, one is for the new website, one is for an application that web services built, and then two applications that are GIS 
uh, team uh, created. So just wanted to share the actual awards. They came in. They came in. We just wanted to share them with you. They look very pretty. <laughs> <laughs> um, any new business? All right. Without objection, we're adjourned. <laughs> Thank you.